Hello and welcome to chapter 15, Blood Vessels and Blood Circulation. In today's video, we're going to look at blood vessels in terms of the types and how they're different structurally, do an outline of the pulmonary and systemic system. We're going to look briefly at the arteries, uh, focusing mainly on the ones that have anatomical positions, looking at the veins, a little bit about um, circulatory exchange and blood flow, a little bit about blood pressure, and then just touch on the vascular disorders. Okay, so notice in terms of key terms, you have a lot of arterial, aneurysm, embolal, um, pleb is a good word. Here's one of my favorite words, sphygmomanometer. Don't miss that one. And that's basically a blood pressure gauge. You have thrombo, which is a clot word, and a lot of veno in it too, okay? So when you look at the cardiovascular system, you basically have two systems. You have the system that goes to the lungs at, to get oxygenated, and that's the pulmonary circuit. Then you have the system that goes to everyone else. It's kind of put into three loops. You've got the head and arms, so you've got the aorta, that, or the, the arteries that take it away from the heart, and the veins that take blood to the heart, and they collect, collect in the superior vena cava. Then you have two systems. Um, arteries take it to the internal organs, mainly the intestine here to gather up and then to the liver. And then they pretty much put the legs down at the bottom and then veins again will collect and take it back to the heart. Notice that not all arteries are oxygenated and an example of that is the pulmonary artery. The pulmonary, first off the pulmonary trunk, the pulmonary trunk separates into the left and right artery and arteries take away, but in the pulmonary, this is the exception of where arteries are not highly oxygenated. And that makes sense because they're going towards the lungs, okay? When we look at the structure of the blood vessels, basically you have arter arteries, capillaries where exchange contain, connect where exchange takes place, and veins. Arteries take blood away. Capillaries is the site of exchange, and veins take the blood back to the heart. Arterioles are kind of like mini arteries, and venules are like middle veins. Here you have the oles, which is sort of the suffix for small, and uoles, which is suffix for small. Now, when you look at the structure of the vesicles, all, both the capillary and, sorry, both the artery and the vein have three levels or three tunics as they're called. It's very important you understand the function of each of the tunics. The internal tunic is very smooth and that's the epithelium. Your middle tunic is muscular, you have smooth muscle, and if you look at it, you have two layers. That's because one layer runs longitudinal to shorten, and another one runs circular to constrict. So you're longitudinal and you're um, circular. In your artery, your muscle layer is much thicker, and this is because the muscles help absorb that extra shock that has to go with the pulse. Then you have the outside outer tunic, which is mainly connective tissue. Please realize in your body, veins are not blue and arteries are not red. This is just a diagram that is added to help you understand. When you look at them, they may be a little blue, but they're not necessarily blue. Uh, it's called blue blood because when oxygen hits hemoglobin, which is an iron compound, it turns blood redder. Normally, arteries are deeper and venules are more surface level, but not always. Okay. Also, one major difference between an artery and a vein is veins have valves. So, arteries are thicker, veins have valves. Okay. Now, when you look at the capillary, 
the capillary is the site of tissue exchange or fluid exchange with the tissue. It is single cell. This is the only area where exchange takes place. All the other arteries and veins are to get the blood there and pull it back again. It's at the capillary when exchange takes place. And that's because these cells, the epithelial layer is so thin that diffusion can take place. Also with the advantage of, or the addition of histamines and other chemical messengers, we can make those blood vessels leaky to allow things like white blood cells to go through. And that's done with a histamine or something similar. Now, capillaries must be within a couple of, in, a couple of centimeters of every single cell because every single cell needs to be oxygenated and take away the carbon dioxide. So you have many, many, many capillaries. Although they are small, you have billions of them. As a result, the blood pressure will drop as it goes from the arteries to the capillaries. And in your veins, your blood pressure is very, very low. So your blood pressure does not move your, your blood through your veins. That's why you have valves. Valves are sort of ways to go only one way. So your blood will be pushed to a certain area and then the skeletal muscles contract to push it further. Okay, let's look at um, the system. Arteries carry blood away, veins carry it toward. Notice, arteries are usually highly oxygenated with the exception of the pulmonary system. Pulmonary arteries are low oxygenated. Pulmonary veins, high oxygenation. When you look at the structure of the artery and vein, you will see that the artery is more muscular, so it has that larger middle tunic. Uh, thicker wall and that thicker wall is to absorb the pressure of that pulse um, and that's what gives your your artery the pulse is the pumping of the blood as the blood comes out of the heart it surges or pumps high pressure so you need a very strong hose in order to um, keep that pressure in okay very thick um, Smooth inner layer, outside connective layer, two layers of muscle. Arteries have thicker muscles, right? Good. Now, when we look at the systems, you have, when it comes to the systems, the aorta, we usually talk about the aorta coming out of the heart, but we really don't talk about what happens to it after it leaves the heart. The aorta is the biggest blood vessel coming out of the heart very thick, very muscular, because it's taking that surge of blood from the left ventricle. It goes up, so it's ascending. It goes around, so it's the arch. It goes down, so it's descending. As the blood goes up, it goes into, there's three parts that come off of it. The first one is the brachiocephalic artery. Brachio means arm, cephalic means head. So this is the head that serves the, sorry, this is the artery that serves the arm and the head. That one then divides into the left subclavian and the carotid. The carotid goes up to your head, your brain. The carotid is the one that you get the pulse on if you take your pulse in your neck. Also, that's the one that if you cut, you get nice spurting blood in the horror movies, okay? Then you have the left common carotid and the left subclavian artery. Uh, these subclavian arteries sound tricky, but sub means below, clavian is clavicle. So these are the arteries that go below the clavicle. Then it goes down. You have a bunch of little ones that go into the intercostal arteries. The intercostal means Costal means ribs. So these are the arteries that supply the rib muscles. Then you go to the main gut organs. Now you won't need to know each one of these unless I have the organ attached. So if it's got the kidney, kidney is a renal word. So the renal artery goes to the kidney. Um, the gastric artery goes to the stomach. The splenic artery goes to the spleen. The hepatic artery goes to the liver. I won't make you memorize these, but I will have you, like if I have the kidneys on it, you will have to identify them. 
Then notice it divides and once it divides, it is the iliac. Then it goes to the external iliac and internal iliac and then you go down to the legs. You need to know these vessels, but you pay more attention to where they are going and what's attached to them than just memorizing what order they come off, okay? Once you get into the leg, you have, so we've gone to the common iliac. Then you, iliac is part of the pelvis. So iliac makes sense. External goes out, internal goes in. Then it goes by the femur bone, so it's a femoral. Then it goes to the kneecap, so it's the popliteal. Then it goes by the tibia, so it's the tibial. Then it goes, and there's one that goes by the fibula, it's by the fibia. Then the dorsal pedis, um, this is where the uh, baby pulses are taken and baby IVs are put in, either the dorsal pedis artery or in the vein. So when babies are doing stuff with, uh, because their blood vessels and their arms are so weak, you usually use baby leg stuff. Um, I want you to be aware that blood vessels go up to the brain. You are not responsible for these blood vessels in terms of the ones that go up to the brain after you get to the common carotid. So your car carotid is the one that goes up to your head and then it makes sense. The one that goes by the occipital lobe is the occipital and when it goes by the temporal is the temporal. Maxillary is the top of your head. Labial is lip. Facial goes to the face. Th thyroid goes to the thyroid. You won't be labeled on this one. This one, very important. You will be asked to diagram something similar to this one. I um, pay attention to the location of them because almost all of them have the location word, um, dorsal pedis, pedis has to go with foot, so it kind of makes sense. Dorsal metatarsals kind of makes sense. All of them are related to the areas of the body. Okay, let's pop ahead to the veins and then we'll come back uh, to the rest later. When you look at the veins, which are blue in this situation, again, they all have the same naming and the fact that the veins are related to the area, with the exception of the juggler comes from the head. Then you have uh, iliac, femoral, oh, saphenine, saf no, saphenous. The saphenous vein. The saphenous vein, this is the one that gives the nasty um, varicose veins. So the valves go on the saphenous vein and this is the one that's usually removed or closed down. You have the venous arch, uh, which is another name. Other than that, most of them are labeled, oh, I guess the azagus is kind of the one that doesn't have the name. Most of the other ones, the names match the area. Okay, I will continue on with the um, hepatic portal in, oh, first off, head veins. You are not responsible for the veins that come out in the head. You're just responsible for the systematic veins of the main ones of the body. I will continue on with the portal veins and the portal, um, the gut vessels in the next video because I see I got so excited my time's already run out. So stay tuned for part two, Vessels Continue.